Hey everybody, welcome to the next lesson in rational expressions. This time we're going to do adding and subtracting rational expressions. Last lesson was multiplying and dividing. Adding and subtracting is going to be a little bit more difficult. This will probably be, if I'm thinking of the course of the year, most students find adding and subtracting of rational expressions the most difficult lesson of the year. So, don't be too surprised if you're going through this and you're saying, ooh, this is difficult. Yeah, it will be. This is what will probably require the most amount of practice for the entire year. So just a heads up, nothing to worry about, but so that you're aware. Okay, let's take a peek at this lesson. So what makes adding and subtracting more difficult than multiplying and dividing, which we did last lesson? Well, multiplying and dividing is a little bit easier because if I ask you to multiply or divide, really, just over to the side here, if I ask you to multiply whatever, it's easy because, again, we learned or we remember that it's numerator of numerator, denominator of denominator. If we start talking about adding, now what we need to do is we need to find ourselves a common denominator. That'll be probably the trickiest bit from today, is when we start throwing variables around, what's my common denominator? Well, the rules that I learned in elementary will be the same rules as grade 12. That's good news. Okay, I wanna find a common denominator. Well, my common denominator is, the easiest way to find my common denominator is to multiply these two things two denominators, I shouldn't say things, together, and that gives us 12. What you're going to keep hearing me say, just like the last lesson, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by one in a sneaky way. What I'm really doing is I'm going to multiply two thirds by four over four, which is really one. And I'm going to multiply five quarters by three over three, which is really one. That's 8 twelfths plus 15 twelfths, which is 23rd over twelfths. Do I really expect you to show this step? Well, on something this basic, no. But when we get to the grade 12 stuff in just a minute, yes, it's really going to help you. So I'm going to keep doing it. The next one. My common denominator, well, the second term is over 8, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 8 over 8. The first term is over 7, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 7 over 7. And I'm just going to, now that I've got a common denominator, I can write it with a common denominator, and that will be 11 over 56. So, two things to keep in mind. To get a common denominator, I'm going to multiply my two denominators together. And we're really multiplying by one in a sneaky way. We're not changing what it's equal to. We're changing how it looks. So we must find that common denominator first. If we can find the lowest common denominator, that's even better. And I'll tell you what I mean by that in just a little bit. So when can we divide? This has always been one of the trickiest parts, or at least I found maybe a struggle for students in high school, is because they learn how to do fractions and then they pick up a calculator and they forget what they're doing. So can I divide the twos right now? A lot of students want to say this. Oh yeah, look at that, they cancel. Look at that, this is three. No, for the love of Buddha, that's not three. That's 5 over 2. That's 2.5. You can't just cross stuff off because it feels good. I can only divide if I can factor. I can only divide if I can factor. This is important. If you were in class right now, there would be a picture up on the whiteboard and it would say, Every time you just cross stuff off, you are killing a kitten. So I'll show you what I mean. 
Here, the first one I can divide because two is a factor of the top and the bottom. I can divide because x plus one is a factor of the top and the bottom. I can divide because those are factors, because those are factors. I can no divide here. I can't do that. No. Four does not divide into x minus one. I cannot do this. X plus two does not divide into x minus six. I cannot do this. The square doesn't divide into the triangle. I don't know how you want to think of it. I just need you to really, really remember. I can only divide if I can factor first. Hopefully, you don't kill any kittens as we go through this. So, let's try grade 12. So the first thing I'm going to say to myself is, just like the last lesson, step one is, can I factor? Well, no, they're monomials, so nothing to factor. Step two then is, what's my NPVs? See how those things are never going to go away? Well, it's going to be just x and equals zero. Step three, what's my common denominator? So our common denominator, well, first let's do the coefficients. So my common denominator, I'm just going to write it off to the side here. I'll just call it CD. Well, the smallest thing that 8 and 4 both divide into is 8. Then I say, what's the smallest thing that x squared and x divide into? x squared. So now what I'm going to do, I'm really going to take my time with these first examples here is I'm going to say this guy here, I'm just going to write it below because I'm running out of room already. Okay. I'm going to say the first term has, already has my common denominator, but the second term does not. So to get this common denominator, what am I going to multiply by? Well, if I need an 8, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. And if I need an x squared, I'm multiplying top and bottom by x. So really what I'm multiplying by is 1. Now I'm going to write this with my common denominator, like that. And I'm really taking my time here. Now once I've got a common denominator, I'm going to write it with a common denominator. And then I say to myself, is there anything else I could maybe factor out of the numerator? Can I factor here? No, I can't. So we are L Dunno. That's my final answer. There's my non permissible value. Okay, let's try again. So number two. Can I factor? No, sir. Non-permissible values, x can't equal zero. I find it, I box it, boom, goes the dynamite. Common denominator. Well, the smallest thing that x and x squared divide into is x squared. So, I'm gonna copy down my work here. The first term requires x squared, so I'm going to multiply by x over x. I'm going to then simplify, write it over my common denominator, and say to myself, can I factor the numerator? Nope. Done. That's it. Okay, so maybe you're saying, hey, that's not so bad. And he said earlier that this was the going to be the worst lesson, or I should say the worst lesson, but maybe the most difficult lesson in 30-2. What's he talking about? Well, let's start getting a little bit more complicated. So I just got some binomials flying around now. Okay, that's immediately going to maybe start making things more complicated. So first step here on number three, can we factor anything? No, sir. Okay, non-permissible values. X can't equal zero or two, box it, boom. Easiest mark to get and lose. 
Now, common denominator. What I'm going to say my common denominator is, is I need one of everything I see here. Or I'm going to say, I want to think about when I get more difficult questions, my common denominator is I can multiply these things together. So my common denominator is going to be x, x minus 2. And notice I'm going to leave that in factored form. Remember our first step is always can I factor. So let's leave stuff in factored form. Okay. Copy down what I've got. So now I say to myself, the first term needs an x in the denominator. And the second term needs an x minus 2 in the denominator. So I multiply numerator and denominator by 1 in a sneaky way. I'm going to write out my common denominators. And I really want you to do this step. Do not skip that step. Now, here comes really, really important. Huge star beside this. Bingo. Every time your teacher has asked you a subtraction question in high school, they have been messing with you. Did you know that? Did you also know that suddenly my threes and twos got mixed up? Did you know that? Okay, fix that. I'm sure a couple of you were cursing at the screen there. So every time your teacher has asked you a subtraction question in high school, they've been messing with you. Here's why. Because we are checking to see if you will distribute this negative right there. This negative, when it gets distributed to the x and to the negative 2, is going to change both of those signs. I really need you watching for this. This is a huge deal. It is the number one mistake in this section. Says the guy who's been doing this for way too long. This will then become plus six. The second some of you mess this question up, I am telling you, your teacher is going right to there and saying, yep, I bet you that's what they did. So two X minus three X is minus X plus six. Nothing to factor, I am done. Okay, so when I get a subtraction question, my friends, I'm watching for the distribution of the negative. I'm telling you that's gonna be on your quiz, your test, your cumulative, and your diploma. Let's watch for it. So number four, first thing now I'm noticing is, oh, subtraction, he's messing with me, what a jerk. Anything to factor? Nope. Non-permissible values? Sure. X can't equal negative a half or a three. Box it. Good to go. Common denominator. I need one of everything I see. So my common denominator is going to be that times that. So I'm going to, the first term needs an x minus 3 over an x minus 3. And the second term needs a 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 1. Okay, again, please do not skip this step. This is difficult stuff. Now what I'm going to do is, now that I know my common denominator, I'm going to write it all over my common denominator. I don't expand that out. I leave my denominator the way it is. Now here, this is where I start seeing people dividing incorrectly. They go, oh yeah, look at this. Bam. Look at that. Bam. No, I can't. I know you want to do that. It feels good. You can't. X minus 3 does not divide into 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1 does not divide into x minus 3. No can do. Don't do that. El Vado. Okay. So what am I going to do then? Well, I'm going to simplify my numerator and leave my denominator the way it is. So 
in the numerator, I'm going to get 3x squared minus 9x. There's that negative. I'm really going to watch for that distribution to the next term. Minus 8x minus 4. And collect any like terms I have. 3x squared minus 17x minus 4 over x minus 3, 2x plus 1. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm always going to check to see if I can factor my numerator. Thankfully, this one does not. I'll just tell you that. But if it did, I would expect you to factor it. Okay, there's a tricky question right there. That's right there. That is difficult level. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Other thing I want you to think about as you're going through this tricky section is that all of these questions I could verify graphically or numerically in my calculator. Remember what we, there's that little video lesson I had about graphing and making sure the graphs are the same. If the graphs are the same, we are good. If the graphs aren't the same, then we screwed something up. Okay, five and six. If you've got number five and six, you are good to go. My first question is, can I factor? Ooh, look at that right there. Difference of squares. Sure I can. So I factor. Now that I've factored non-permissible values, so x can't equal positive negative 4. My common denominator is going to be x minus 4, x plus 4. So the second term needs an x plus 4. Now I'm going to write everything with my common denominator. And I simplify my numerator. Don't touch my denominator. I simplify my numerator, hoping for something to maybe factor or simplify at the end. So I get here 4x plus 48 over x minus 4, x plus 1. So now I say to myself, is there anything I can factor in the numerator? Yeah, look at that. There's a 4 right there that can factor. So I'm just going to go sideways because I'm out of room here. And on a really good question, or good question too, when a teacher says that, a math teacher, you're like, oh God, that can't be good for me. On a really good question, we'd see some stuff divide out. So I really want you checking that final step. Can I factor one more time? Okay, last one. So first step, can I factor? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to go sideways here just because I'm worried I'm going to run out of room. Remember, math should always go down the page. But okay. Now, this is subtraction. He's messing with me. I'm going to keep an eye out for that. Non-permissible values. X can't equal positive negative 3. Box that bad boy. Okay, common denominator. Well, my common denominator is going to be 3 minus x, 3 plus x. So the second term here needs a 3 plus x in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, again, I don't multiply out that denominator. The numerator, oh, it's a subtraction. He's messing with me. The number one mistake. Right there, I'm telling you, on a multiple choice question, I guarantee you the wrong answer where people don't distribute is there. So this will be minus 3x, and for the love of Buddha, minus x squared, not plus x squared. Simplify my numerator. Well, the x squareds cancel, right? They go to zero. That's the one time that in my humble opinion, it's appropriate to say cancel. Now I say to myself, can I factor anything out of the numerator? 
Yeah, look at that. It looks like I can factor out a 3. Okay. And if I factor out a 3, I get 3 minus x over 3 minus x, 3 plus x. Oh, look at that right there. I know I've done this question right. Bam. 3 minus x divided by 3 minus x is 1. And again, I'm just going to squeak it in the corner here because I'm running out of room on my laptop. There it is. I cannot divide the threes. Unless it divides into any, everything I cannot divide by the threes. Okay, this, love it. Like that is the awesome question. If you got that, you are good. There's nothing I can ask you after that. If you've got that, factoring, difference of squares, subtraction, division at the end, you know what you're doing. Okay, let's wrap this up. Summary. First thing, I should factor. Factor, factor, factor. Then, state all MPDs. Simplify if possible. Add or subtract fractions, we must find the common denominator. The common denominator requires one of every term in the denominator. Multiply the numerator and denominator of each term by the missing factors from the common denominator when subtracting. Be extra careful, careful with the negative distribution. Okay, friends, this is going to take some practice. The most practice all year, that's what I want you to think about. So you're gonna double down, you're going to do more work than you've been doing so far because it requires it, it's difficult. If you can figure this out, then the next lesson, which will be solving equations, will go so smoothly. So this is the most difficult thing all year, super hard. If you get this, you are golden. I expect to see some of you for tutorials because it's so tough. There's no shame in that. This is tough stuff. Okay, that was fun. I'll see you next time.